the Oxfordshire Hour. Catch us at any time of the hour, any time of the day with more on life in your county. In our final help hotline of the week, self-defence that's easy to learn. The Beers examine the popularity of websites for business and find out how you can monitor their success. The musical sounds of the Deep South come to the not-so-deep south of Oxford. The score have all the latest from the manor ahead of another important weekend for Oxford United. And all that's followed by a full listing service of what's on around the county. This is the Oxfordshire Hour and all of that is to come over the next hour. But also, have you ever thought of taking up a new skill in the new year? Well, a bit later on in the programme, we're going to be learning about evening classes on offer right across the county. And also today, uh, we'll be offering you possibly one of the most unusual prizes uh, we've ever given away. We've given away holidays before and theatre tickets. That's right. Uh, today, we're giving away a whole... I think we'll just tease people <laughs> with that one, shall we? We'll find out more <laughs> later it's something on. something neither of us have, but you may well want. <laughs> Anyway, first today, a new survey suggests that more than three quarters of us are happy with the range and quality of shopping in Oxford City Centre. As many as nine out of ten people are pleased with the choice and standard of our restaurants and cafes. Uh, the survey carried out on behalf of Oxford City Centre management also found that most people haven't changed their method of travelling into the city centre since its pedestrianisation. Sunday trading has proved to be a popular development, uh, but there's been an increase in the number of visitors who want our shops to open later. 68% of those questions said they were happy with the air quality and noise levels in the centre. Uh, this is a marked contrast to the results of a survey carried out before pedestrianisation. In April, uh, only 19% of people were satisfied. However, the quality of public toilets and street cleanliness uh, were highlighted as areas for improvement. Vista and Reading are the places most frequently visited instead of Oxford. And moving to another part of the county, Didcot should develop to the northeast. That's the verdict of an independent panel set up to consider the options after controversy over whereabouts new housing should be built around the town. As we reported on the big splash last year, a public examination took place in Didcot Civic Hall in December to consider the pros and cons of building in different areas. They've suggested developing to the northeast in order to protect the high quality farmland which lies towards the west. The panel's recommendations will now be considered by the County Council's Environmental Committee this March. This week, a team of 18 people from Wallingford swam the channel. Well, actually, they swam in a school swimming pool in Woodcott. Uh, but the 2,000 lengths, 28 and a half miles, is the same as swimming from England to France. Uh, the staff from Wallingford-based CAB International aimed to raise £1,000 for the Leukaemia Research Fund from sponsorship. This charity swim was just one of the many planned at the pool through the year. Now, each day on the quiz, we'll show you a picture and ask you a very simple question about it. All you need to do is make sure you're paying very close attention right the way through the programme. Now, today, we're going to be listening to some Cajun music a bit later on in today's cultural camera. Uh, today, we want you to name the language that they'll be singing in. Name the language they'll be singing in. So today, how's this for a unique prize? It's body piercing, would you believe? Yep, up to the value of £30 at uh, Needle Tree Body Piercing on the Cowley Road. Uh, if you'd like to win, call us. All you've got to do to call us is get in contact on our phone number, Oxford 311113. You can fax us, of course. Our fax number, Oxford 553355. And you can email us. Our email address is thehour at oxfordchannel.com. Now, in this day and age, security is something we are all seeking. We secure our homes, we secure our cars, but increasingly there is a desire to ensure our own personal security. Now, one way we can do this, and which doesn't cost a penny, is learning a few basic self-defence tips. To pass on some advice in this area, I'm joined now by Paul Coleman from the Oxford Karate Academy, who, uh, who's joined by our victim today, Jamie. Jamie, thanks for uh, helping out. Now, we're going to show a few basic tips first. Let's move on swiftly to our first uh, demonstration. Yeah. Okay, one of your um, viewers was asking what happened if someone was grabbing you from behind. Okay, if Jamie would uh, come to grab me from behind, one of the first things to do is actually drop your weight down and roll your shoulders round to open the grip. You can use your hips to push back into the groin and your head back into their face. If I can demonstrate actually how powerful your backside can be as a weapon. Now, I do this on Jamie's bottom instead of his groin. I think he'd be a bit happier with that. From here, just curling the pelvis up, you can actually knock him back about four feet. So that can be a good use for big bottoms then. <laughs> yeah, big bottoms are useful. So from here, by rolling the shoulders and creating this gap, 
and knock the arm away and hit into the solar plexus below the rib cage to win the person. Okay? So you're dropping your weight, which if you try to pick somebody up and you drop your weight, you feel heavier. So if you should try and grab me and lift me off the floor this way, my first move is to drop my weight, roll, and then hit back. Now, all that looks uh, very physical. Do you have to be really fit to be able to do this? No, a prerequisite for karate is not fitness. That's a, a byproduct of good training. Many of the people that take up karate are inflexible. They have poor coordination, just everyday people. Um, some people do karate as a sport form. We're teaching a traditional form as, as self-defense. We have children, uh, adults even joining in their 50s. So how much training would people require to get a, a basic level of self-defense I expect skill? most people to do about two classes a week. However, we're open seven days a week, and it's down to them how much they'd like to train. Okay. So we're well, there for them. Tip two. Okay, one of your viewers was asking if someone was taking a wild swing at your head. Okay. Mm, basic karate, the, the hands are held here, and we're punching through, practicing blocks. These skills will take some time to learn. The very simple response, if he's hitting, is to move forward. And the punch is going past, it's bringing my arm up. And I can use my elbow to hit. The elbows are very, very strong in a, in a fight situation. The wrists can give, and it takes time to teach how to punch properly. So just to raise your arm, and move forward, and hit with the elbow to the jaw or the temple. Now, I, I have to say, if somebody came up and suddenly wanted to throw mm. their fist in my face, my immediate response would be to panic and want to run. Is it not just about physical skill, but having that kind of presence of mind in a moment of crisis? The very difficult thing with karate is fear. When people are really, really frightened, some people do not respond at all. So the, the training over a period of time tries to teach you fear management, and the training has to get fairly realistic in its approach, or, although it's done with control. It's, it's not done half-heartedly, but the control is paramount to, to performing properly. And something else, of course, which we should emphasise here as well, is that all the tips that we're showing today are very much about self-defence as well. These are never to be yes. used on other people. Well, m moving on, we have had a number of uh, letters and calls on this subject, but I did want to uh, uh, read out a letter that we've had from Mrs Saunders. Now, she says she, she lives on her own. She's uh, writing from Stiefel Aston. She reads all the stories about people being attacked, and although nothing's actually happened to her, she finds she's got to the stage now where she's just simply too scared to leave her home and walk down the street to go to the local shops. Is there, any, is there any simple tips, some general advice that you can give to people about uh, boosting their confidence? Um, one thing, Ashley, is body language. Many people walk along with their hands in their pockets, shoulders rounded, looking at the floor, and they look like an easy victim. So just hold your body more erect, your hands by your side, and just to walk a little bit more proud, you don't look so prone as a victim. Um, people must be very aware of situations. So people going to the corner shop to buy bag of sugar and they open their purse and there's a pile of money someone can see that so it's carrying silly amounts of money with them um, not being aware going to a cash point without looking around things like getting out of a taxi and the taxi driving off you know ask the driver to see you go safely through your door so awareness is actually more important than self-defense Okay, we call awareness zanshin in karate, it's a Japanese word for awareness. Zanshin. It's very, very important. So just tell me a bit more about karate and how it, it's good sort of overall, not just for self-defense, but for physical um, fitness and also mental well-being as well. Many, many sports uh, dispose of one side of the body, so karate is training both sides of your body. You're learning coordination skills, balance, you're improving your flexibility, you're gaining confidence through the practice of it, meeting new people. And we have a broad spectrum of people across the community um, many different religions, different ages, sizes. So it's a good way to get together. It can be fun as well. It's a lot That's of hard great. work, but it's well, good fun. You've sold it to me. Paul Coleman from the Oxford Thank Karate uh, Academy. And Jamie, who's a willing helper there. Thank you both very much. Thanks Thank for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank you. This is the Oxford Jet Hour. Now the Women's Festival. That's all in a moment. Stay with us on the hour. You're watching the Oxford Jet Hour. This is the Oxford Channel, helping keep you in touch with people and places throughout the county. Now, the Oxford Karate Academy is recognized as one of the best in the country, run by instructor Paul Coleman. It's there for all shapes, sizes, and ages to go along and take part. Cultural Camera went along to dodge some kicks and block some punches.
previously in your karate, you're, you're training to develop yourself to defend against an assault from an assailant. The main thing you're using the block are your arms, okay? You can use your body to take hey. techniques if you know how to smother an opponent. Arm conditioning is quite severe, so beginners would start off very gently with this. So I used to do this on scaffold tubes on the building site. Okay, so your arms become very, very tough. And when you're blocking against the kick, okay, you need to be able to take some blows with your body as well. Your body conditioning through sit-ups and proper training, you'd be able to take quite a few punches. Okay, so what Matthew's gonna demonstrate here is a thing called chi shi. This is just a, a paint pot filled with concrete with a handle <coughs> inserted in it. It's not a weapon, so don't get worried. Okay, what we're using this for is to strengthen the range of some of the techniques you use for punching and blocking. It's done with breathing, okay, so it's to exercise, it's a karate specific implement to exercise your karate movements. These are traditionally um, a very antique method of training. Okinawa was a small island in the Ryukyu Islands, and the Ryukyu Islands are halfway between China and Japan. Um, the advent of karate, there are very few gymnasiums, high-tech equipment. So they would use simple things that were around them, so maybe get like cans, put a handle in it. They would even use old um, small train wheels, instead of like bogey wheels with a small wheel on the end, use it as a dumbbell. Okay, so they were using implements that were at their disposal at the time. They didn't have the money for high-tech equipment. So this has been passed down really. It is antiquated. I mean, nowadays most people for fitness will go to a gym. In karate, we're just trying to preserve a tradition it's handed down to us. It's actually quite nice to work with. It's quite different to anything you'd use in the gym. So over here, we're going to work on jabs and crosses. So very much like a boxer. They can't reach from here or here. They're going to jab. They can't reach from here and cross. Okay, then Kieran's moving around. You drop the pads, moving around every time he pops them up. One, two, okay? Moving around. I keep my hands up. One, two, okay? So you kind of move around, keep your partner busy. Okay, so let's watch. We're going to get Matt up. Can we get you two gentlemen up? Kakie. <coughs> okay, this exercise is to, through using strength here, pushing, then redirecting the technique. So I've got him by the throat, controlled this arm straight away. From here is resistance. He's pushing very hard. Pushing. Okay, and I'm pushing. One, two. It's just an exercise. When I feel he's pushing hard, one, I can strike for that. So I turn his energy to the side here, maybe. So we're trying to rotate, maybe here, take the arm down. He's pushing here, taking. Pushing here, taking. Going straight. Cut. Okay. Now we're doing martial arts 19 years coming up. But with uh, Xi'an Paul Coleman, I've been training now seven. Seven, seven years. years. Seven. What made you get into it? Um, being bullied at school. Being bullied, you know, you're that age, 12, 13, the, the kids can tend to be a bit uh, nasty. So, you know, I wanted to get into something. I was no good at football, so I thought, this, I'll do this, and I've stuck at it. Never give up. So, uh, it's hard work, but it's enjoyable. I'm second down. Got a long way to go yet. Long way to go to reach. <laughs> My instructor's great. I went in two competitions. And I've been hey. in some, you know, in Abingdon, places like that. I just practiced and went into a lot of tournaments all over Britain. To get showdown to, to be black belt, you have to, have to you have to have some conditioning. You have to be strong. So, actually, in the grade in itself, you'll be doing arm pounding, leg conditioning. If you know, if you fail on that, you failed the test. So it's uh, quite very important to uh, get conditioned. The information on that class, give us a call here and we'll put you in touch. Now that's a little too energetic, here are some ideas for other classes you can take part in.